gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, this is Danger Zone, and I know some of y'all don't remember this song, but I remember this song, and that's all that counts. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how this young lady walked into a Danger Zone, okay, but she walked into a danger zone we've been on a stephanie mills trip this morning and we're gonna go to denise williams next okay y'all may not hear the denise williams tribute but we're gonna be doing some tributes here okay ladies and gentlemen i forgot where i was when this song came out but i do remember this song coming out and i do remember her performance and so forth it wasn't the most popular of songs that she did. She doesn't want to lose, ladies and gentlemen. In a danger zone. She's in a danger zone. Don't let it start. Sorry, I'm trying to close this. I was about to stop the video. All right, we got to talk about something. This is going to be a short video. I want y'all to pay attention. 33,494 so-called subscribers now i say so-called not to knock the subscribers please pay attention it is important this is not knocking the subscribers this number has been number it says 369 just in the last month 369 of you yay okay hold on now i don't advertise my videos it's word of mouth or you doing a google search and you find it i hear a lot of people well, i just found you that's not my fault the first thing I say to them, I just found your video. It's not my fault. You just found it. I've been here way too long, so it's okay if you ain't heard about me. There are millions of YouTube channels out there. Okay, so finding mine, needle in a haystack, just have to ask the right questions. So let me let me explain something to you Oh, There was a time this was at 300,000. I went on vacation and Google started removing 700,000. Uh, not 700,000, 70,000, and 30,000, and 40,000, just removing thousands of people at one time. Why? Just to do it. It wasn't just me that did it to it, did it to a, quite a few people. It was delisting them from all type of subscriptions, going after targeting channels like mine. Okay, I'm not too concerned about Google and the numbers, because I know if you go to other places, you'll see that the views are different. You go to other channels, and you'll see the same video, and you'll see that the number of views because people piggyback my videos and they'll post them other places. Okay. Now look, hold on now. We, we got to go ahead and let y'all know before I get on off of here. This was a video to just put up, putting the pieces together. Okay. Putting the pieces together. All right. Now, somebody say it. That's just the video. Okay. Because some person left a stupid message anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, you see these comments right here? I'm not I'm not answering those, ladies and gentlemen. I, I appreciate those, you know, the people who are leaving comments, but I, I don't have time. That's why this was two months ago. I, I don't have time. Some of the videos have comments on them. Okay. Now hold on. Let's get back to contents, because this is why we're doing this. Uh oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's see if it's gonna no, it's not letting me do nothing. It's frozen. Okay, because it was going over here. Let's go back there for a second. Then we'll come we'll come to this in a second. I, I need that's this is why I'm doing this video. One to show you how Google plays with the numbers. So those numbers are not accurate. So do not pay attention to that when you go to anybody's channel. Google manipulates that. However, some of you are watching. Some of you are viewing. Yay! Okay. Wanna give you your own props and your shout outs. Alright, now we're gonna go here. That's why I'm doing this, because I saw that many of you are spending a lot more time watching these videos, okay? Some of you are learning that if you watch the videos to the end, you get a lot more information than you would have if you just watched the 5, 10, 15 minutes and didn't have enough time. That's your fault, okay? They're all kind of eggs. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody's Easter. Putting the pieces together, ladies and gentlemen, this video shows you that the links are in the video, so let me show you how this works. Hold on now. Let me show you how it works. There are tiny URLs, tiny URLs, and they're also in the title. 
See, Google has this thing where all of a sudden they want to say that all of a sudden I need to verify myself again. This account has been on the internet. Pay attention. This account has been on this internet for greater than seven years. And Google is saying, we need to verify you. Excuse me? You didn't have to verify me a week ago. So what's all of a sudden you need to verify the account? So what they're doing is they're blocking URLs. That's fine. That's fine. But they can't block that URL. And if they do, you'll know it was because of me. Then you'll know it's intentional what these idiots are doing. Eventually, I will be going after them for changing their policies. Okay. Hey, thank you, young lady. That that's 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 my Stephanie. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's explain how Google works. Google claims they have their analytics. That's this junk right here. Do not go by Google's analytics because pay attention so that you get it. We're we're just going to click on this real quick. I don't care about this video because there are not going to be no analytics because the video just went up. So we're going to go back. That's just letting you know they claim they have analytics. <laughs> okay. Hold on now. Yeah, 27 views in less than a couple of minutes because it hasn't even been up that long. I just put it up before I started this video. So we're, we're not concerned about the views. You guys should know that about me and my channel. Not concerned about the views that because Google doesn't give us the correct number of views anyway. So I'm not concerned about that. Remember, they control the numbers. They control what they report. And they'll come up with any excuse that they can come up with saying, this is the reason why we did this, and this is the reason why we didn't report that, because it doesn't fall under this, and it doesn't fall under that. So we don't report this, and we don't report that. That's what they will say, because that's the stupidity of it being their system. So I want y'all to pay attention to something so y'all get it. Nobody ever questions Google on these numbers. Nobody ever sues them as to the accuracy of these numbers. You know how they used to tell you, in five seconds, your video will start. And they give you a five-second advertisement. You notice how those seconds are taking longer now? It's no longer five seconds. It's no longer five seconds. Amazing, isn't it? So now you get them for truth and advertising. But hold on now. They don't tell you that those are seconds. It's only implied. Nothing says seconds. It just t ticks down. Five, four, three, two, one. So that's the technicality they're using with you guys. That's why some of the videos, advertisements, seem like they're taking longer. Because they never identify that it's seconds. They just says 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or 10, 9, 8, or 29, 28, 27. They don't say that those are seconds. Ah, but they're implying that it's a clock. Because it's a countdown. So the implication that it's that is seconds. But because they didn't directly say it was seconds, that's the technicality that they're getting off of. Do you have to sit through YouTube's, pay attention, do you have to sit through YouTube's commercial? No. As long as Google has a contract with the government, you don't have to sit through their commercials. You're not required. As long as Google or any other platform receives protection from the U.S. government from suits based on the information they put on the Internet, then you don't have to sit through their commercials because they're receiving a government benefit. As long as they're receiving a government benefit, Pay attention, then they must comply with the federal law. Now, let's do that. We're going to do BARD real quick. Hold on now. This is a different BARD. See, this is the one that ain't keeping track. Wake up. As long as a company is receiving a government benefit, they cannot... deprive a person their rights protected by the Constitution. Comma, can you give me three case citations supporting this conclusion? Question mark. Stop listening. You're correct that there are legal principles prohibiting government actors from infringing on the constitutional rights while using government benefits. This principle is often referred to as the conditional conditionality doctrine or the unconstitutional conditions doctrine. However, its implications is not as straightforward as you might initially think. Here's a breakdown of the situation. Let's have him explain. Give it, give it a second. 
you're correct that there is a legal principle prohibiting government actors from infringing on constitutional rights while using government benefits. This principle is often referred to as the conditionality doctrine or the unconstitutional conditions doctrine. However, its application is not as straightforward as you might initially think. Here's a breakdown of the situation. 1. Yes, there are cases supporting the conclusion that government actors cannot infringe on constitutional rights while using government benefits. Here are three examples. Perry v. Schwarzenegger, 2006. This case struck down a California law requiring private employers to provide certain employee benefits as a condition of receiving state contracts. The court held that the law violated the First Amendment rights of employers by forcing them to choose between their religious beliefs and doing business with the state. Rust v. Sullivan, 1991. This case upheld a federal regulation that prohibited doctors receiving Medicaid funding from providing abortion counseling or referrals. However, the court's reasoning was based on the government's ability to impose restrictions on the way it spends its own money, rather than on the conditionality doctrine. Moose Lodge No. 107 v. Irvis, 1972. This case held that a private club that discriminated on the basis of race could not be denied a liquor license simply because it received state benefits like police and fire protection. The court reasoned that the state could not condition its general services on compliance with the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause. 2. However, the application of the conditionality doctrine is complex and often fact-specific. Courts will balance the government's interest in imposing conditions on the receipt of benefits with... Okay, so... Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention. Conditionality doctrine and the unconstitutionality doctrine. Those two doctrines that they've created, please understand, as long as they're receiving federal benefits, give me one second. Copy. Now we're going to go to perplexity. Okay, perplexity. We're going to go here. And we're going to go here. And we're going to go here. I wasn't planning on talking about this, but we might as well talk about it because many people are dealing with Google, Facebook, um, and a couple other platforms that are violating their rights. You're even dealing with other organizations that violate your rights. Now, there's a federal law that says Google is protected, can't be sued for the information it puts up online. However, as long as they're receiving federal funding, of course they can because they're receiving a government benefit by way of the law that protects them. So watch this. The unconditional constitutional uh, conditions doctrine prohibits the government from conditioning the availability of a government benefit on the waiver of a constitutional right. Pay attention. Pay attention. They cannot get rid of your availability of a government benefit on the waiver of a constitutional right. This principle arises when the Constitution prohibits against pers uh, penalizing an individual for exercising a constitutional right. Ah, now watch this. We, we don't care about anything else. Watch this. Wake up. Wake. What is the law that allows Google and Facebook and other social media platforms to be protected against lawsuits for the information published on their websites? Question mark. Stop listening. It's called the Communication Decency Act, ladies and gentlemen, and many people refer to it as Section 230. That, that's how they refer to it. Now, give me one second. Uh, what is the anti-terrorism? Does it relate to this and how? Okay, so watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Since Section 230 protects social media platforms, Comma, and Section 230 is a federal law, i.e., colon, federal benefit, comma. What is the law that says that anyone receiving such a federal benefit must afford 
their clients the basic fundamental due process rights afforded under the Constitution's Bill of Rights? Question mark. Stop listening. I took that one a little too far. I went too far in detail as to where I'm headed. So it might have a difficult time answering this question because I led it too far. The law requires anyone receiving a federal benefit to afford their clients the basic fundamental due process rights afforded under the Constitution's Bill of Rights. It's not explicitly tied to Section 230. No, didn't say that. However, the general principle of affording due process rights is enshrined in the United States Constitution, the 5th and 14th Amendment, because they like to say it applies to the federal law. So it, I told you I took it too far. Okay, so what I did is I'm going to do this right here. You see this right here? We can go back to Bard. Bard. I, I, erg. That's when I hear Bard, that's what I think is that commercial. Erg. Okay, that, that's because that's what it sounds like to me. I think Bard is a stupid name. And Google knows that I've said that. I've said that from the very beginning. Bard is a stupid name. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said in a video just before this one, if I post a video and I am using Bard or ChatGPT for some essential information, I will do the best I can to remember to post a link for that video and a link to Bard and Perplexity in the title. Okay? Just so that you know. So give me one second. And those court cases wake up. And those court cases also focused on the fact comma, that these social media platforms must afford individuals the basic fundamental due process rights and or the rights accorded under the Administrative Procedures Act, comma, please provide three case citations supporting this conclusion. Stop listening. While recent rulings have indeed chipped away at the seemingly absolute immunity offered by Section 230, the concept of affording individuals basic due process rights or rights under the Administrative Procedures Act APA, in connection with social media platform content moderation hasn't been definitively established in court cases. However, there are three cases that touch upon these themes, offering some potential paths forward. 1. Packingham v. North Carolina In this 2022 Supreme Court case, the court ruled that North Carolina's law restricting social media platforms' ability to moderate content violated the First Amendment. While not directly addressing due process or APA rights, the case highlighted the importance of platform freedom in content moderation and the potential conflict with government mandates that could stifle their discretion. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen, you hear that? See, if the platform has constitutional rights, like a First Amendment right, to moderate their own content, then the people have a constitutional right who are on those platforms to have due process. It's called equal protection of law. Because they are corporations, they must comply with the Administrative Procedures Act. That being the case, they must comply with federal law because the Administrative Procedures Act is federal law, which means they must comply with the Bill of Rights. Shh, don't tell nobody. Two, Van Buren versus Twitter, Inc. This 2023 Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals case involved a challenge to Twitter's suspension of a user's account for alleged violations of its terms of service. The court affirmed the dismissal of the case based on Section 230 immunity, but notably raised concerns about the lack of transparency and accountability in platform moderation practices. 
This opens the door for future arguments emphasizing the need for due process like protections for users facing content removal or account suspensions. Ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly what I'm saying, but nobody's come at the angle that you hear me coming at. The fact that they utilized the Constitution for their protection then means that you have equal protection of law. They do not get to receive the benefits of Section 230 because it is a government benefit. They do not get to receive the benefit of Section 230 and then violate constitutional rights. They must have policies put in place, and the reason why they have a grievance procedure on all of these platforms is because of the Administrative Procedures Act, because of the First Amendment, right to petition for redress. So let's continue. Three, Barnes versus Twilio, Inc. This 2023 district court case, while ultimately dismissed based on Section 230, involved a claim against Twilio, a communications platform provider, for allegedly aiding and abetting robocalls. The court, in its analysis, acknowledged the potential application of the APA to platform providers acting under government regulations. While not directly related to social media content moderation, it suggests the possibility of using the APA framework to challenge platform actions influenced by government mandates or regulations related to content removal. Hold on now. There are people out there who question my ability to understand the law. Now, if this is what the, tr the courts truly have said, this is what I've already been thinking from the very beginning. That's why I could put this stuff in here now. I've not looked this up before. Like I said, I was going to get Google in its own due time. And I was going to hit them with the fact that they are an administrative agency. Why? Because they are registered with the Secretary of State as a corporation, which means that they've vowed to comply with the Administrative Procedures Act. Hold on now. They've also allowed themselves by registering with the state, not with the federal government, with the state of not having any protections under 230. Why? Because the state says that they have elected to be sued and to sue. Everyone who becomes a corporation in the United States waive the right to immunity and the right to be sued and to sue. Go back and look at the agreement for corporations. You waive your right and agree to be sued and the Secretary of State operates as process server. Shh, don't tell nobody because it's a secret. Y'all are not supposed to know these things. They don't talk about this. Nobody talks about this. So Section 230 only applies when it comes to the internet, it does not apply to the individual person who has the account, okay? So when they remove an account because of some potential violation that is not clear and they don't follow the Administrative Procedures Act or they violate due process, they make themselves liable to sue. Those of you who have these attorneys who bring these cases, y'all need to understand these attorneys don't know jack. Attorneys don't know the law. That's right. I said that to you ignorant mother who think that you went to some stupid law school and that means you learned the law. You learned policies and procedures. And you argued cases that didn't amount to anything because that's not law. Sorry, they study court cases where the courts have made certain decisions and they're not studying the law. They're not studying the formation of law. They're not studying the acts of Congress or the statutes at large. They're not studying congressional intent. They are studying only what the courts have said. The courts don't make law. That's why there's no such thing as the common law being the decisions of the courts, because then that would mean the courts could make law. Only one agency in America is authorized to make law, and that's the agency known as the legislature. The courts are not legislatures. And separation of powers clause and a delegation of authorities clause prohibits them from thinking, pretending, or even attempting to make law. So there is no such thing as case law, or as I call it, coast law. Okay? <sighs> I'm so glad we had this time together. So that's how you take care of organizations like Facebook and Google. And by all means, a class action lawsuit will take care of that. All the people on YouTube have to do, those who've been delisted and all that, the ones who had to go to Rumble and all these other platforms, off platforms, all you have to do, and those of you who are getting tired of Google sitting up here telling you what to do with your account, violating their own terms and policies and procedures, then, man, take them to task. 
as a group. Put together a group. All you need is more than five. That becomes a class action. All you need is more than five. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, today's the 24th. So four more days, every last court that we sent those documents to by registered mail will have been delivered. We're just being patient. That's why I haven't talked about it. Sent it registered mail and not regular first class, blah, 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 blah. Didn't do any of that. Sent it regular mail uh, through registered mail, not regular mail, registered mail on purpose. I knew how long it would take. I knew what it would take. And that's just the way it is. All right. Thank you all for joining us here. This video wasn't supposed to be this long. Wasn't supposed to be going into all of this. But hopefully some of you gained some insight into all of this. Now, we got one more thing because I, I was going to do this anyway. So we're going to take that. And we're going to go to BART. I mean, not BART. <laughs> we can go to uh, Perplexity, which is ChatGPT on steroids. You see how it says the search results didn't turn up any results and due process requirements. United States Constitution. What is the basis for the Supreme Court's ruling that social media platforms and the Anti-Terrorism Act? What are some of the example of court cases? Social media platforms were sued for child safety despite the protections of, and what is the arguments against uh, legal immunity provided under section for social media platforms? I'm going to do this one because, see, that's the other thing. Because they were putting up things dealing with children that they weren't supposed to, and that's why they were getting sued. A lawsuit against Meta, a lawsuit against MySpace, and so on and so forth, and a lawsuit against Google. Anti-terrorism act, while not directly associated with South Sea, the example of the case of the scope of the immunity provided by section was being considered. Okay, they don't have immunity. The government cannot give immunity to private actors. That's why they're under contract, people. The government cannot just give somebody immunity just to be given immun immunity. They're doing it for financial purposes. Now, watch this. I'm going to give it this. And I'm going to give it this whole section because that's how perplexity works. I wish they get the microphone for perplexity. Perplexity hasn't done the microphone yet. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to look for a microphone for perplexity. I'm going to look for a talking unit, uh, an app. Okay, now it still says the results, but she does do all of the cases. While the cases are not definitively established to require due process or APA rights in this context, they indicate the potential for further legal development, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. All right, so that's it, y'all. We're going to speak to y'all later. Got to go. Got to go. We got to go.